Now the title of this video isn't meant to be a brag, like, oh look at me, I'm an accountant, he says with the accountancy certificate on the wall behind him. If anything I'd encourage you not to be an accountant, and it's because we tend to make jokes just like these. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> but it just shows that I might be in a position to help explain exactly what's going on in Dan Bilzerian's company, Ignite International, and what's going on with their most recent set of accounts or their interim financials. Now obviously remember that these are the interim financial statements which means they're for the first six months of 2020, not for the whole year. So obviously if you're trying to compare the entire of 2019 to the first half of 2020, it's not really going to make sense. So you have to compare the first half of 2019 to the first half of 2020 if you're trying to do your own research. But if you've got any questions about anything I say today, then be sure to drop it down in the comments below and I'll answer it whenever I can. Also, please remember that these are just my opinions as an accountant looking solely at the publicly available financial statements for Ignite. I don't have any insider information, I don't work there, and I don't do the accounting for them. So I'm basically just making assumptions of what could have happened at Ignite, and it's not proven fact. And also, this video isn't made to slander or bring into disrepute the name of Dan Bilzerian or his company, Ignite. Now that disclaimer's out there, let's get into the video. So let's start off nice and easy with the profit and loss account. We can see that the revenues are up by about $1.3 million in the first half of 2020 compared to the first half of 2019. This is obviously a really good start, but I suppose you would kind of expect the revenues to be up for the first half of 2020, because especially in quarter two, everyone was stuck inside at home and probably would have been smoking way more than usual. But interestingly, if we look a little bit further on into the accounts, we can see that actually sales directly to the customer are down by about a million dollars. Sales in total are up because Ignite have started selling directly to businesses and to shops. Now the downside to this is that they're selling at wholesale prices, which are typically lower and cheaper than selling directly to the customer. And because the sales made at wholesale prices are obviously lower than directly to the customer, this causes a bit of a problem. The gross profit's actually fallen from about 37% down to around 30%. This means that even though sales have gone up by about one, $1.3 million, the profit has actually only gone up by about 100, 120,000 ish dollars, which obviously isn't really that great. They've put in loads of effort to make those sales and it hasn't really turned into much profit. So why has the profit only increased by a little bit? Well, obviously because they're selling at wholesale prices, they might be selling the same amount of product but obviously for a lower price. Or maybe the suppliers have increased the prices as well. So even though they're selling the same amount of product, it costs them more to buy. And therefore at the end of the day, even though they're selling the same, if not more, they're not making as much profit. We can also see that Ignite's general and administrative expenses are also still on the rise. Salaries have been going up, office costs have nearly doubled, and audit and professional fees have increased as well as the company is now public. It looks like Dan at Ignite could potentially be getting a little bit carried away with their spending. The business lost a massive 60, 65 million dollars last year, but yet they're still upgrading their offices or maybe even bought a second office. But on the upside, it does look like Ignite have managed to control their massive marketing expenditure. Expenditure has fallen from around 12 million in the first half of 2019 to about three and a half million, which is obviously a good step. But if Curtis's claims are true, then it could be as a result of certain directors not being able to go out and rent yachts or take massively expensive business trips costing 120 grand for two day trips. But it also looks like Dan's been getting some money out of the business in a different way with some share based payments. Now obviously it doesn't say which director these share based payments are to or it could be to all of the directors. But obviously the one with the biggest share is probably going to be the CEO or Dan. The interest payable expense has also increased as a result of that big $18 million loan that they took out towards the end of last year. All of this together has led Ignite to lose about $17 million for the first half of 2020. Now obviously this is a slight improvement on the first half of 2019 where they lost about $22 million but it's still not really that great to be losing $17 million every six months. Now some businesses definitely do start life making a loss in their growth phase. They start by taking a loss leader approach with really low prices and then as they establish the market dominance they increase their prices and simultaneously cut their costs. Now Ignite already have fairly high prices 
so they probably can't raise them too much higher and they also have a lot of costs that need to be cut to make the business profitable. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Only about 8% of you are actually subscribed to the channel, which is really low. So subscribe, it's free and you can always unsubscribe later if you want. So what else is going on in the Ignite accounts? Well, you can see that Ignite have been burning through cash at an absolutely crazy rate. In the first half of 2020, they've already burnt through about $10 million of cash and only have about $6 million of cash left. That means they'll be fully out of cash in about three or four months from July, which means that they'll have run out of cash by about October, November time. So about now, really. Their inventory figure is also constantly rising. Inventory has risen from about $6 million to about $8 million. And you might say, well, that's a good thing. They're just making sure that they don't run out of stock. But at a rate of about $10 million worth of sales a year, and considering they're holding $8 million worth of inventory, it means it will take them about nine or 10 months to sell their current stock. Now, having all this stock isn't really a good thing because they're wasting loads of money holding all this stock instead of investing it back into the company and growing the company. If you compare it to big popular brands like Kanye West Yeezys, they tend to sell out of all of their stock in a matter of minutes. Even though they place a large order because of the hype around the product, they literally sell out in minutes. It also looks like Ignite have taken out yet another loan on top of their $18 million worth of loans to fund their crazy expenditure, as they now have around $25 million worth of loans. And what's really interesting about these loans is that they're convertible. And what that means is that if Ignite can't afford to pay back the loan, well actually the loan provider can like exchange the loan for shares in the business. And it means that the provider could actually own a big chunk of Ignite. Although this might not really be the best choice for the provider because as a result of all the losses, Ignite seems to be a bit of a sinking ship. It's not really gonna be any use to the provider to convert all of that money into shares if Ignite ends up bankrupt and the shares end up worthless. Looking at the cash flow statement, not really that much has changed. They're still making these big hefty lease payments and acquiring new assets, most of which is being funded by the big drawdown on that loan facility. This obviously isn't really much of a good thing. It shows that they're not really making much money themselves and they're having to borrow money from other people to fund their normal running expenditure. Something that I also thought was really interesting that I found when reviewing these accounts is down in the deposits note where they actually have purchase order deposits. This is where the supplier doesn't even really trust Ignite to make the payment on time or to even make the payment at all for the goods they're purchasing. They're making Ignite pay up front for the goods instead of giving them the typical 30 days trade credit, which is where they give them like a window of 30 days after the delivery to make the payment. In the first half of 2020, we can see that those massive related party costs are starting to decrease, which is a good thing. There's no lease payments, there's no marketing costs, there's no business expenses, and there's no travel expenses, which is a good thing. Unless, of course, all of those related party transactions are gonna be charged in the second half of 2020. I guess we'll just have to wait to find out. Now, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think of Dan Bilzerian and his company Ignite. Is this a company that you'd invest in? If you're currently invested in Ignite, does it shock you that the losses are continuing into 2020 and that the company is running out of money? From reviewing these interim accounts, it does look like the heavy losses are continuing into 2020, even though they have cut back on their massive marketing budget, which is a good thing. But if Curtis's claims are true, it could just be because Dan hasn't been going on as many exuberant business trips. Also on the upside, it is a good thing that Ignite is starting to branch out and sell to shops and other businesses instead of just directly to the consumer. But they need to focus on expanding sales as a whole, not just expanding small areas. But they also need to focus on reducing those marketing costs, those general administrative expenses, those salaries, those office costs, and more. Because otherwise they're gonna continue making heavy losses which just isn't sustainable. If you're thinking about investing into Ignite, it might be worth waiting to see whether they can reduce those expenses before making your investment. If you are currently invested into Ignite, then I'll be potentially quite worried because they are burning through cash at a very fast rate. I think Dan Bilzerian has a good opportunity to show that he wants to make this business succeed and obviously not that he's just using it as his personal expenditure dumping ground. 
As always, I'll be sure to keep you updated with more developments on the Ignite financial position and also about the Dan Bilzerian story and how that's progressing as well. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding the notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.